actually will be showing up, and people are showing up in huge numbers there right now, uh, as uh, you can see uh, the, the crowd getting ready uh, for what they hope. Uh, these are Obama supporters in Chicago. Uh, they hope it will be an exciting and positive night for them. But you know what? Uh, we're going to have to watch these votes actually come in. Uh, you saw Jessica Yellen over at Grant Park just a little while ago uh, when we uh, were uh, talking to her. Uh, we're going to do something that's never been done on television before. Uh, we're going to bring her in from Chicago into the Situation Room, right uh, in, into the CNN Election Center, excuse me, right now. I want you to watch what we're about to do because you've never seen anything like this on television. All right, big round of applause. Uh, we did it. Uh, there she is, uh, Jessica Yellen. Uh, you're, I know you're in Chicago, but we've uh, done something, a hologram. We beamed you in. We beamed you in here uh, into uh, the CNN Election Center. Uh, I want to talk to you as I would normally be talking to you if you were really face to face with me. I know you're a few, th at least a thousand miles away, but it looks like you're right here. Tell us what's going on in Chicago right now. Well, there are massive crowds gathered outside here, as you just saw. Uh, 65,000 ticketed people are l going to be let in, but as many as a million are expected to be outside surrounding uh, this Grant Park location. And walking on the streets outside, Wolf, you can feel the intensity, the excitement, the anticipation for what they hope will be a truly historic night. He's their hometown boy here in Chicago, Barack Obama is, and so there's real passion for him in this town, Wolf. And where is he and his family? Where are they now? Where are they watching all of this? They might be watching us right now on their own uh, monitors, uh, wherever <laughs> they are. Uh, Barack Obama is at the Hyatt Hotel nearby where he's going to eventually be watching uh, election returns as well. He played basketball earlier in the day, which has become, you know, an election day tradition for him. Uh, and we're expecting him to go home at some point, change, uh, and then watch his election returns and, you know, turn up here eventually to make the much anticipated speech. Well, you know what I like about this hologram, and you're a hologram now, Jessica, uh, instead of having thousands of people behind you screaming and shouting, you know what, we can have a little bit more of an intimate conversation and our viewers can enjoy that as well. Uh, how are you excited are you, Jessica, that this is the, you're, you're the first one that we've <laughs> beamed in to uh, the CNN Election Center? I know, it's like I follow in the tradition of Princess Leia. Uh, it's, it's something else. It's the first time it's been live on television, and uh, it's a remarkable setup, if I could tell you about it for a moment. Uh, I'm inside a tent in Chicago that's been built, engineers spent about three weeks doing it. There are 35 high-definition cameras ringing me, uh, in a ring around me, I'm in the center, and they shoot my body at different angles, and I'm told that transmits what looks like an entire body image back there to New York. Uh, these cameras, I'm told, talk to the cameras in New York, so they move, and they know when to move when the cameras in New York move, and uh, it looks a little different from a real person there, but it's pretty remarkable. It's still Jessica Yellen, uh, and you look like Jessica Yellen. We know you are <laughs> Jessica Yellen. Let's get back to the important politics of this night. Or what are they looking for right now, the Obama campaign? Uh, what are they most interested in seeing in this, the early, uh, the early part of this uh, evening? Well, what they're going to be looking for, first of all, are those red states that we've been talking about. Uh, Virginia, Indiana, to see what the results look like. You've started talking about it, and especially how those er uh, late deciders broke. They have a very clear sense of how many people were already on board with them going into today. The big unknown is the people who made up their mind yesterday, today. If there's a high number of late deciders breaking for them in these red states, they feel that will be a very, very good night. Uh, and so they're feeling nervous. Everyone I'm talking to, very, very nervous right now, Wolf. I, I think a lot of people are nervous out there. All right, Jessica, uh, you're a terrific hologram. Thanks very much. Jessica Yellen is in Chicago. She's not here in New York with us at the CNN uh, Election Center. But you know what? It looked like she was right here. It's pretty amazing technology. Let's take a closer look and see what's going on right now. All the polls in Florida won't close until 8 p.m. Uh, at the top of the hour. But a lot of the polls have already closed in Florida, and so they're giving us their numbers so far. Less than 1% of the precincts have reported. Senator McCain, uh, slightly ahead this is very early 54 percent to 46 percent a difference of 6,575 but as I said this is very very early in Florida we'll see how close this contest is the all the polls in Florida out in the, uh, the western part of the state in Pensacola Panhandle uh, they're not going to be closed until the top of the hour so we can't make it
make any projections there. In Indiana, all the polls have closed in Indiana. About 9% of the precincts are now reporting. Senator McCain slightly ahead uh, by 2,276 votes, 50% to, to 49%. And you can see about 260,000 uh, ballots have already been counted. Uh, we're only getting started. More polls are about to close. We're going to continue our coverage from the CNN Election Center right after this. I believe in the future. In the future. I believe in protecting the environment. I believe in energy independence. I believe we can limit greenhouse gases and keep energy cost affordable. I believe in technology. I believe in American ingenuity. I believe that meeting a challenge brings out the best in us. We will do this. I believe. I believe. I believe. We can be energy independent. We can continue to use our most abundant fuel cleanly and responsibly. We can. We will. Clean coal. America's power. Me? I'm fast. That's why I use the BlackBerry Bold with AT&T 3G speed. I can surf the internet fast, download attachments fast, and send them to my colleagues fast. Excuse me for a sec. It's good to be fast! Only AT&T has the new BlackBerry Bold. The fastest BlackBerry ever. Only on the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T. This is America. We protect what we hold dear. And every day, Bank of America is here for you. With 200,000 associates, 6,100 banking centers, and hundreds of products and services to protect what you have and build opportunities for the future. No wonder one out of two households in America trust their finances with Bank of America. Bank of Opportunity. I was just out of college. I was living in New York City. I had everything in front of me, and then I got really sick. I started to see doctors, and I went to specialists, and it was that time they discovered I had Lyme disease. After a year of going through tests, my medical bills were about $50,000. If I had to do it all over again, I don't know what I would do differently. I had health insurance. I had good health insurance, is what I thought. D.L. Hughley's new show really breaks the news. Do any of you plan on watching D.L. Hughley breaks the news next week? D.L. Hughley breaks the news. CNN Saturday night, 10 Eastern. of War 2 presents UFC 91 Couture versus Listener live Saturday November 15th from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas on events in demand pay-per-view Hey how's it? How you doing today? Are you familiar with this beach at all? Just keep a really close eye on your kids today, okay? Yeah, we're sunscreen. <laughs> Vote now for CNN's Hero of the Year at CNN.com slash heroes. Six and a half minutes from now, the polls will be closing in three more states, including the battleground states of North Carolina and Ohio, the third state, West Virginia. You take a look at these live pictures, Anderson. These are folks, they're running into Grant Park yeah, they, right now. They've just opened it up. This is the, uh, where the Obama campaign has uh, basically set up a giant viewing party. They're gonna be watching uh, election results come in. Uh, they basically just opened up, and literally you see people running to kind of get a good uh, location so they can watch. Uh, Senator Obama is anticipated to speak there uh, at some point uh, this evening. Yeah, they've gone through security, uh, and now they're getting, go, going in there to get a location. Uh, these are very, very excited folks uh, that uh, that are getting in there. To, they think they're going to be celebrating. And, we don't know if they will, but we'll see. Amazing weather in Chicago tonight. I think it, uh, I heard Roland say it was like 71 degrees. So 71 degrees. 71 so it's going to be a nice night to view. But he's really here, Roland. He's not, he's not in Chicago. 
Is he here or is he in Chicago? Sure, we have the actual Roland Martin. He's, here. He's yeah. actually He's here. Actually okay, here. the real <laughs> Roland is here, not a hologram. All right, but maybe one of these days, Roland, we'll bring you in, we'll beam you in uh, to the uh, CNN Election Save Center. Travel, absolutely. Uh, Roland Martin getting ready. All right, let me walk over to the, okay. to the boards and see what's going on right now. Uh, in the key battleground state of Florida, 27 electoral votes. Uh, they haven't closed all the uh, precincts in Florida yet, the western part of the state, uh, but the state is already reporting some numbers. You see about 130,000 or so p uh, ballots have already been counted right now with less than 1% of the precincts reporting. McCain with 54%, Obama with 46%, 11,137. That's the difference. This year, uh, as you can see, we're doing the math for you, so you don't have to worry about that. In Virginia, where the polls closed at 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, the 2% uh, of the precincts have now reported. McCain ahead, 53% to 46%, uh, but this is very, very early. You see uh, that he's ahead by 4,387 votes. In another battleground state in uh, Indiana, where the polls closed at 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, right now we have McCain with 51% to uh, Obama's 48%. He's up by 8,619. John McCain. That's with 12% of the precincts reporting 11 electoral votes at stake in Indiana. Let me walk over and bring in Campbell Brown and John King. Uh, you know what? I'm excited about what's going on. I, I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but it's just exciting to be able to report well, about what's going on, Kim. Well, we're starting to get some bits and pieces bits that and may pieces. help you put the uh, puzzle together eventually, Wolf. And let's go to John for that and take us through. I know you're getting some county by county numbers. Let's start with Virginia. Long a red state, um, a, a real race. Uh, Obama was ahead going into it, and we're watching especially northern Virginia. We're watching the area Virginia, but we have very little right now, Campbell. If you look, we have two small rural counties reporting down here just south of Richmond. Chesterfield County has a decent amount of the population, 3.7 percent. This is suburban Richmond right in the top part. Down here gets pretty rural, but again, very early on, John McCain winning in that one county. The 46 percent is only of that county, so don't anybody jump right ahead. Most of the state of Virginia is still very white. That means the votes have not come in yet. Campbell County, a very small rural county out here in central to south Virginia McCain running up the numbers as you would expect in that part of Virginia right there but we have a long way to go down here in Virginia is a critical area the, the most critical area of Virginia right up here the northern Virginia suburbs just outside of Washington DC are growing rapidly and an African-American concentration down in the Richmond area so Virginia Demographics changing a lot in that part especially uh, northern Virginia rapidly changing up here influx of suburbanites who lean Democratic and influx of Latino voters who have been leaning Democratic in most of the polls too if you look over over here, Campbell, this is getting interesting early. The state of Indiana is starting to fill in more quickly. And I want you to look now at this. This is the state of Indiana with results coming in. And we emphasize and must stress 12%. Long way to go in Indiana. A lot of Democrats in years past would say, could we just stop it right there? If we lose Indiana by three points, that would be a great year in the past. The Obama campaign thinks it is in play here. And I want to go back in time to show you why. Excuse me for stepping across, but I'm going to go back to 2004. This is John Kerry versus George W. Bush. And look, 60% to 39%, George W. Bush wins the state. Remember the blue. Indianapolis has a Democratic base. Bloomington is a college town, has a Democratic base. And up here, you're essentially in the Chicago suburbs, closest over here, Gary, Indiana, Hammond, Indiana. And you move across here, there's a Democratic base. Remember now, there, those are the blue areas. That's where John Kerry did well four years ago. Right. Now let's come for, fast forward to where we are tonight as we watch the results come in. The Democratic votes have not come in in Bloomington yet. In Indianapolis, they're just starting to come in slowly. You see that light green, nothing at all up here yet. And yet Barack Obama is running a very competitive race in the very early results in Indiana. Why? He's doing well here. This is the Illinois border, southern Illinois. This is right, conservative rural his country. Home state. It's his home state, but this is conservative country. If he can run well down here and he can run well over here, we could have he a real could, surprise. He could, we could have a real surprise. And let's just look at one other thing before we go here. Fort Wayne, Indiana. You see McCain is winning right now. Let's come into that county. That's Allen County, five and a half percent of the state population. McCain is winning 52 percent to 47 percent. But one way we judge is Barack Obama competitive statewide in Indiana? Again, excuse me for stepping across. Let's go back in time. Four years ago, that was. 63 36. So at the moment, Obama is running stronger than the Democrat, even in the counties he is losing. And that is critical. When you're competing in a state that, that defaults to the other side, Republican in the case of Indiana, yes, you want to win where the Democrats are, as we saw John Kerry do four years ago, but you also want to perform as strong as possible in the places the other guy's going to win. Limit the margins, run up the numbers in the Democratic communities, and Barack Obama has a chance in the very red state of Indiana.
And we should say, as always, caveat, still very early. Very These are early. very preliminary numbers. We get a lot 12%, of 12 percent. That okay. leaves a long way to go. A lot of counting <laughs> And yet we can do so much with 12 percent. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Wolf. All right, guys, thanks very much. Uh, let's uh, update you on what we know so far for sure based on our projections. And take a look at this map. Uh, the red state, that's Kentucky. We've projected that that will go for John McCain, eight electoral votes. Uh, that blue state up in the uh, corner in New England, that's Vermont, three electoral votes will go for Barack Obama. These other yellow states, these are states that have closed Indiana, Virginia, South Carolina, and Georgia. But we cannot yet make any projections based on the information we have so far. Doesn't that necessarily mean it's going to be close. It just means that we're in no position to make a projection yet. Uh, and, if, and, and right now, it's almost 7.30. Uh, right now, it is 7.30. Uh, right now, three more states are closing their polls. North Carolina, Ohio, and West Virginia. And uh, if it were a blowout or whatever, uh, we'd be able to make a projection right now. But we don't have enough information to make any projections in these states. So North Carolina uh, is clearly a battleground state. Ohio, remember, no Republican has ever been elected to the White House without carrying Ohio. Uh, that's, that state has now closed its polls. Uh, and West Virginia, we're going to watch all of that closely. Let's update you on what we know so far. Florida, all the polls in Florida will close at the top of the hour. But as of now, with those precincts, about 1% reporting, McCain with 34%, Obama 48%. Uh, it's a 39,713 advantage for Barack Obama right now in, uh, in Florida. We're watching this race closely. Uh, Virginia with about 3% of the precincts reporting. Uh, McCain with 56%, Obama 44%. Uh, uh, it's uh, slightly ahead for McCain right now. In Indiana with 14% of the precincts reporting. 52% for McCain, 47% for Obama. McCain ahead with 16,812. 14% of the precincts just changed, 52 to 47 in Indiana. I think we're going to have to check those Florida numbers. If something's uh, not looking right, uh, if you add up those percentages in Florida, we'll get back and check those numbers in a moment. But I want to walk over to Anderson. Uh, yeah, those Florida numbers don't look right because it doesn't add up to anything close to 100%. But yeah. we'll check out what's going on in Florida. We'll fix the math and we'll update our viewers as soon as we can. It's also important to point out to our viewers that where these votes are coming from at this point is very important in terms of we just saw John uh, King looking at the state of Indiana, uh, some of the, uh, the, the areas around uh, Indianapolis, around the Chicago markets we haven't heard from. Uh, again, just important to keep in mind, it is very early hours, but you're already getting emails, David, from some folks saying, are, are we in for a big surprise? Well, yeah, well, it's interesting. Some of the Obama folks are sending emails saying, hey, I'm scared. But look what's happening here. It looks like we're in real trouble. Uh, but it's important to remember back four years ago, for the first hour and a half, we were on here talking about President Kerry. You know, and he was going to celebrate. Those yeah, exit and polls. It, and uh, early ex well, there was just wrong. a lot of signs that it was looking like Kerry, especially the exit polls. And I'd have to say, these are, the, these are really preliminary. Nobody should draw too many conclusions. Let's get a little more of the night, and we'll settle it. It's way too early to say President McCain looking at these numbers. <laughs> But as you look, I mean, I saw you looking at uh, John King's map of Indiana yes. very closely. What yes. were you looking for? Well, I think that's a much more reliable measure. These raw numbers tell you nothing. But if you look at four years ago, what the counties did, and then and now today, that gives you a much more reliable basis. And clearly in Indiana, he's uh, Obama sure, is doing making better. inroads in some counties that they they and were not competitive. Then no Bush question won about by it. 21 points. So uh, that, that's not going to happen. I mean, I think Obama also benefits from the fact that he's a next-door neighbor uh, in, in well, Illinois. Illinois, yeah, those and, counties and, right on the and border. And they share a big yeah. media market they there, so they the, know Barack Obama. They ship a ton of people in, 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 into Indiana. But also, when, when John showed that southern sector, a lot of folks thought that Obama, when he ran for Senate, was not going to do well uh, downstate. And the reality is he did. Uh, and so he did extremely well there. Even when they went to Iowa, folks were saying, yeah, but that's closer to the border. It's a southern border. He won't do well. Chicago is the focus. But he went to those states. He spent lots of, uh, I'm sorry, that portion of the state, spent lots of time there, and they got to know him. And I think you're seeing the benefit of that, being right on the border with Indiana. If you go back to May 6, the Indiana primary, where uh, Obama almost beat Hillary Clinton, yeah. the key county was Lake County, uh, up in the north, the north 
west corner of the state, Gary, where it came in very, very late. I remember, I remember it was we a whole chaotic situation. We right. like right. the mayor, 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 the uh, put I Obama over the top. I conversations, I think, between Wolf and the mayor, like, <laughs> right. why aren't you reporting? I don't understand. Yeah. Okay, we have a mayor in a hologram. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we get a mayor in a hologram. Right. 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 I want to talk to some of our, our, our analysts back here. I saw James Carville, you work in your phone. I'm not right. sure who you're talking to. What are you hearing? What are you interested in? What should our viewers right now at this point be looking for? Well, I, you know, first of all, the national number is going to determine a lot. But, I mean, I think that the, the big overview here is, I'm sorry, there's a recession going on. And that is got, that's going to have everything to do with this race. If if the Obama national number comports with the public average, which is around seven and a half, then he's going to carry a lot of these states. If the national number shrinks to four or three, then a lot of these states that that, that they think they're going to carry, they're not going to do it. I suspect that that you know Indiana, looking at the map, agreeing with what some of our colleagues said over there. A, a lot of these areas that are not in, are, or the Democratic areas are not in. I was just on the phone with some people in Virginia, the Democratic areas of Virginia are not in, but I suspect a lot of Republican areas either. If you have a big win, you know you're going to carry a lot of these states that are going to come up with it. If, if it narrows, then, then you're not going to carry it. Then Obama's not going to carry some of these states he does. I suspect the national numbers will still be pretty big. I'll tell you, the, uh, I think the thing I'm looking for tonight is, one is, I think those gentlemen over there at the table were right, is that if, uh, if these exit polls are as wrong this year as they were uh, uh, for Kerry, then John McCain's going to carry some states, surprise some people, and we may have a closer race than, we, uh, than some of the polls have said. But I'm going to be looking for the silent majority versus the silent minority. Richard Nixon's silent majority, a group of white working class voters that carried elections for Republicans. Reagan found them, working class Democrats. They're going to go out and vote this year. They're voting for John McCain. But this is a very different country. It's more diverse. And the silent majority may now be smaller, relatively speaking. Maybe the silent minority, it may go Republican, but it may not be enough to, uh, to elect a Republican president. And I think Republicans are, you know, Republicans are more hesitant to vote to, or, or to speak out, excuse me, in these exit polls, to give their opinions. They are very silent voters. And, and these, many of these polls do le tend to lean more Democrat. I think also we need to look for some of the trends. You know, I know the Obama campaign was looking at the younger voters, and if we see in Kentucky, for example, an overwhelming majority, it looks like uh, early on in some of these numbers, about 80 percent of young voters, whereas John McCain got some of these uh, in, in, what, in Vermont for Obama, but in Kentucky for McCain, it was the older voters. So I think Obama is relying on some of these older, some of these younger voters. He even talked about the absentee ballots and the absentee voters, but some of those voters, it looks like, are turning out, seem to be shifting in McCain's direction. So I think you're, they're looking at some of these key voting pockets, and those are, I think, the folks that we need to look at when we're talking about some of these exit polls. viewers, we're looking at real votes right now right. in these yeah. states that have closed. Um, but wh why does anyone buy these exit polls? Why don't we even pay for them if no one even seems to <laughs> uh, think Anderson, they're reliable? I didn't even go to the briefing. <laughs> I, I, I walked out of the briefing, I, to be I, honest. I didn't even show up. I, they can be useful post facto if they reweight them to, right. to match reality, then yeah. we can know how did Catholics vote, how did Hispanics vote, how did Asian Pacific Islanders vote. Okay, that's useful post facto. That's right. For tonight, I'm looking at real votes. Right. And I'm it's hearing from people, for example, th one thing that's very interesting, traditionally for all time, absentee and early voters have been 60% generally Republican. This time, maybe as high as 60% Democratic. Does that presage a much bigger turnout for the Democratic Party. Anecdotally, you keep hearing that, but we don't know until the real votes come in today. In other words, did the Democrats simply shift their votes? Right, did the people who were going to vote anyway just vote early? Right. Or, I suspect or do we have, out or do we have if, I suspect, if it's a no. big vote for everybody, does that negate the Obama advantage? Is he just filling a glass that's already right. full? If everybody votes, then, hey, Republicans may have had a good turnout operation, too. We just didn't know it. It's yeah. interesting watching on this big uh, board over here the, the pictures from Grand Park in Chicago uh, where thousands of people clearly have already gathered. Uh, you see a lot more people coming in as they get in uh, through security. Um, we are watching them as, as they are watching us right now. <laughs> uh, we, we, got, we got a lot more uh, ahead. Let's go, back to, uh, let's go back to Wolf right now, Wolf. All right, guys, thanks very much. I want to update us, our viewers, on what we know right now. These are not exit poll numbers. These are real numbers, real ballots that ha already have been counted and have been released by these respective states. In North Carolina right now, less than 1% of the precincts have reported. Right now, Senator McCain with 48%, Senator Obama with 51%, only a 439-vote uh, advantage for Senator Obama. But remember, it's very, very early in this race, 15 electoral votes in North Carolina. Florida, we fixed 
of the technical problems we had. These are the latest numbers coming in from the state of Florida. 2% of the precincts reporting. Obama ahead 57% to McCain's 43%. That's 151,000 advantage for Barack Obama. You can see we're doing the math for you to make it relatively easy. Those are 27 electoral votes in Florida at stake. All of the polls in Florida will be closed at the top of the hour, 8 p.m. Eastern. In Indiana right now, almost 20% of the precincts have closed. That's a significant number. McCain ahead uh, slightly, 51% to 48% for Barack Obama. 17,440, 17,000 just changed, 406 votes uh, difference and advantage for Senator McCain in Indiana. Uh, and the popular vote right now with about 1% of the precincts reporting nationally in all 50 states and the District of Columbia, the numbers that have come in so far, right now Obama with 51%, McCain with 48%. Uh, it's a 64,251 advantage for Senator Obama. About 2 million votes have already been counted nationally, but it's very very early in the process. Uh, if you want to get all these numbers in real time right now, go to CNN.com. A lot of information there. You can plug in the, the, the contests that are of most and in, greatest interest to you, and you can be updated constantly throughout this night. We'll take a quick break. We'll continue our coverage from the CNN Election Center right after this. of America Votes 2008 is sponsored by the new Hyundai Genesis. It all starts with this. And by the Sharp Frontier Series with OSA-enabled technology. Work without limits. Visit the Election Center at CNN.com slash election for in-depth information on the candidates. What's going to happen to the gas guzzlers, the monsters of the road? All the utility in the world isn't worth much if we can't afford to drive them. So, why not have utility and efficiency? The Hyundai Santa Fe, with all the features you want in a CUV, plus 24 miles per gallon. Get 0% financing for up to 36 months and up to $3,000 bonus cash on a 2008 Hyundai Santa Fe. Tell me something. Why does my company have so many printers? Every time I turn around, there's another one wasting electricity, waiting for a print job, not to mention the stockpile of supplies. Give me one machine with outstanding productivity and functionality. With an LCD panel from Sharp that lets me preview scanned documents, plus an inner finisher that doesn't waste space. While you're at it, how about a sleek design? The Frontier Series from Sharp. Work without limits. You wanted it to work out here. You wanted it to work right now. You wanted free weekends and free hands. You wanted it to do more and cost less. You wanted your email, text messages, GPS, and MP3s. Your favorite websites, your favorite colors. And tomorrow, you'll want even more. Okay. Come around and see me thinking about what if there was a way to move goods efficiently using less fuel? Norfolk Southern, the future of transportation. 900 die, a few survive. Soledad O'Brien with the untold stories. Escape from Jonestown, CNN Thursday, November 13th. What are the advantages of installing a solar water heating system? For starters, you'll earn an instant rebate from Hawaiian Electric when you use an approved solar contractor. Plus, you can apply for state and federal tax credits. Year after year, you'll save hundreds of dollars on your electric bill and help reduce our dependence on fossil fuels. So put the sun's energy to work in your home. Visit hawaiisenergyfuture.com. that he has a full head of hair. She reminds me of my, my English teacher. She has a really strong aura. Hair is quaffed all the time. I think he's hot. Tune to Elections 08 On Demand for all the information you need on interests, issues, facts, and candidates. Elections 08 On Demand. Vote smart. Time Warner Digital subscribers tune to Elections 08 On Demand on Channel 101. DL Hughley breaks the news. All new CNN Saturday night, 10 Eastern.
It's election night in America, and we're here at the CNN Election Center. We want to welcome back our viewers in the United States and around the world. Let's update you on what we know. These are real numbers coming in to the CNN Election Center in Florida, key battleground state. All the polls aren't even closed in Florida yet. They'll be closing at the top of the hour in the western part of the state. But right now, 4% of the precincts have already reported in. As you can see, Senator Obama ahead 55% to 45%. He's ahead by 143,000 votes so far. North Carolina, under 1% of the precincts reporting. Senator Obama slightly ahead there. It's very, very early in North Carolina, 50% to 49%, 15 electoral votes at stake there. In Indiana, significant number of precincts already have reported 21%. And Senator McCain slightly ahead, 51% to 48%. He's ahead by 16,239 votes, 11 electoral votes in Indiana. And in Georgia, only 1% of the precincts have reported. Senator McCain has 70% so far to Senator Obama's 29%. Uh, we're watching Georgia closely. It has 15 electoral votes. Uh, I want to go to Suzanne Malveau. She's in Chicago at Grant Park. She's standing by. Uh, let's go to Suzanne. Suzanne, uh, you got a crowd over there. Uh, these are pretty excited folks. Uh, set the scene for us. What's going on? Absolutely, Wolf. Uh, they are actually listening to our broadcast here. A brilliant live shot. Unfortunately, we couldn't hear a word you were saying. Uh, that crowd around you uh, is so powerful. Uh, maybe we could get a handheld mic for Suzanne Malveau because I really want to hear what's going on. But unfortunately, that crowd is so enthusiastic. You really can't blame them. They uh, sense that maybe history will be made tonight. Suzanne, stand by. We're going to get you a better microphone so we can hear what you're saying in Grant Park in Chicago. You see the folks there. They've gathered uh, and they're pretty excited. But you can't compete with that level of noise no matter how loud a voice you have. Suzanne, stand by for that. Uh, Anderson, yeah. I've got a pretty powerful voice. I don't think I could compete funny, you know, that. We've all done live shots where you have like 10 people behind you yeah. like doing that, but they have a crowd of like thousands of people right. behind them who are watching her on TV, and so everybody is doing it. It, it makes the hologram she was all that more She effective. was brilliant, wasn't she? She was very good. I yeah, thought what she, was, she said, from what, what I could saying. tell Great by the reading suit. of her yeah. lips. Great suit. Yes, but it uh, shows the benefit of the hologram, though. You, you don't have any of those crowds. We'll, we'll try to beam maybe Suzanne in, uh, in a little bit. Um, in terms of what the crowds, though, are, are going to be watching for tonight, what do you, what should uh, viewers be anticipating in the next, I mean, it's now 10 to 8, what should we be anticipating in the next half hour, an hour? I mean, when do you think we're going to get some real numbers? I think we'll get Virginia. Virginia's uh, been pretty good about reporting pretty early, Anderson, and of course, Ohio is is another big state. I mean, this is a true toss-up. We've talked about we've talked about Indiana being a toss-up, Ohio a toss-up. Should also point out the polls close in Pennsylvania in in about well, 10 minutes from now at eight o'clock. Right. Pennsylvania, the McCain campaign. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, David. They they have been saying they have to win in Pennsylvania. They, it's a must-win for them. They, it, uh, there are so many ways Obama gets the so 270 <laughs> if if Obama wins Pennsylvania, and we do know that it was there was some closing there, but it was still about a seven point race, five-point race, uh, coming into the f final day. So it would be an upset for McCain to win Pennsylvania, but if he doesn't win Pennsylvania, it's very, very hard Bill, to Bill, say. Bill Bennett, do you believe these polls? I mean, when you hear oh, it was seven points in Pennsylvania, you don't buy it. I don't believe them. We'll see. I mean, but we're, all, we're waiting. You're asking when, it, when we'll know. I don't know, but my feeling is pretty soon, and then it's going to flow fast. I think mm. we're going to know I a lot yeah. pretty soon. We're going to know three or four or five states, but I don't buy them. And I, I, I've asked the same question you've asked about the exit polls, but... Mm. Why, why buy them? What, right, yeah. why, why even bother? So many caveats, you know, right. that, uh, and they're tricky because everybody wants to jump to a conclusion. Well, I mean, you look at the exit polls in New Hampshire during the primaries. I mean, first of all, you look at the polls before New Hampshire. Barack Obama was supposed to walk away with it. You look at the exit polls. Barack Obama was in the lead. Uh, Hillary Clinton won. No, but, no, but, no, but actually, New Hampshire, if you look at the polls indicated New Hampshire, what Obama eventually got, the polls showed that. 
when John Edwards eventually got, the polls showed that. But the polls do not take into account all of a sudden an explos explosive number of voters, and it does not account for people deciding on the day of. No. And so, and we so stopped we stopped polling in New Hampshire so, four days before the primary right. and before right. Hillary Clinton okay. had a nominee. One, one thing that it's was consistent difference. throughout the primaries was that Obama did better in the exit polls than he did with the voters. And I think that's an important... What does that tell you? Late breakers... You know, I, I don't know what it tells what, me, oh, but I just... Tells, it's, it's, I, I have a theory. You. It tells you that the Bradley effect did, seemed to have died earlier. That, in other words, the Bradley effect said that the black candidate would do worse in the actual voting than he would do in the last polls. And in the primaries this year, Barama, Barack Obama actually came out about 3.3% higher but, on average but across the all the states. polls, he did the, worse. Well, the exit polls are strange. I, I think, I, I think Bill Bennett is yeah. exactly right. How do we figure out if these exit polls are off three or four or five points, as they were with John Kerry, what is it we're looking at? Well, know? some pollsters yeah. say that his his supporters, so Barack Obama's supporters, are so enthusiastic and younger, and they're more willing to stop and talk to somebody after they've Again, voted. It all just makes the exit polls seem. But, but most importantly, though, what we are looking at now is real numbers. Yes, uh, we've right, got right. real numbers uh, from 7 o'clock, from 7.30. <laughs> in about five, <laughs> about seven uh, minutes yes, from now, we're going to have real numbers from Mississippi, <laughs> Missouri, New Hampshire, Florida, Pennsylvania. The polls will be closing in all those states. Our coverage continues a lot more ahead. A very exciting night ahead. Also, check out CNN.com for all the latest political news and get the numbers as we get them. We'll be right back. Blackberry Bold with AT&T 3G speed. I can surf the internet fast, download attachments fast, and send them to my colleagues fast. Excuse me for a sec. It's good to be fast. Only AT&T has the new Blackberry Bold. The fastest Blackberry ever. Only on the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T. A building story from Crestor. busy building my life. Something else was building in my arteries. Dangerous plaque. It had been building up most of my life. My doctor said it's a progressive disease called atherosclerosis. And with my high cholesterol, she prescribed Crestor to help slow the buildup of plaque. Along with diet, Crestor lowers bad cholesterol, raises good, and is approved to slow the progression of atherosclerosis. Is Crestor right for you? Ask your doctor. Crestor isn't for everyone, like people with liver disease or women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. Simple blood tests will check for liver problems. Tell me about other medicines you're taking or if you have muscle pains or weakness. That could be a sign of serious side effects. Talk to your doctor about plaque buildup and find out if it's time for Crestor. If you can't afford your medication, AstraZeneca may be able to help. Celebrate heroes this Thanksgiving. Now we're going to take a look at heroes who create solutions. CNN Heroes, an all-star tribute Thanksgiving night on CNN. One. Going to miss your favorite shows? Not anymore. Now you can record one episode or an entire season with an HD DVR from Time Warner Cable. It's easy to use and easy to upgrade with no expensive equipment to buy, which means everything you want to watch will be waiting for you. As for missing your favorite shows, you won't miss that a bit. Call today and upgrade to the HD DVR for just $9.95 more per month. Time Warner Cable, the power of you. Life is good. Whatever you say, honey. Admit it, we have everything we need right here. Like each other? Like digital service from Oceanic Time Warner Cable. And we have more channels to watch, like Ovation, Biography, Lifetime Real Women, ESPN News, Fine Living, Toon Disney, and all the music and movie channels. And free on demand, so I can catch all the shows I miss when I tend to her every need. As it should be. You missed the spot. Final numbers and final analysis of the campaigns. American Morning tomorrow.
Welcome back to the CNN Election Center. We're getting close to the top of the hour. Anderson, what, 15 states and the District of Columbia, they'll be closing their polls in a few, min in a few moments. And a fascinating uh, state to watch, of course, Pennsylvania, a state which the, uh, the McCain campaign has said they, they have to win. And it's a Democratic state, but they've made an enormous uh, effort in Pennsylvania to see what they can do. Let's, let's walk over and see the states that are closing in six minutes and a few seconds. Uh, Alabama, Connecticut, Delaware, the District of Columbia, Florida, Illinois, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Mississippi, Missouri, New Hampshire, New Jersey, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, and Tennessee. Uh, these states closing in about six minutes. We'll see what we can project at the top of the hour. Uh, Pennsylvania, I don't think we can stress that too much, uh, Campbell and John. It's, it's going to be fascinating to see what happens there because almost everyone says if John McCain can't carry Pennsylvania, he'll, he'll have a tough, uh, tough challenge ahead of him. Uh, one to keep a very close eye on, but Wolf, we want to mention we are getting some uh, interesting numbers. If you look a little bit deeper at some of the states uh, from earlier, Indiana and Florida, John has been looking at. And, and again, we should, we should say always, the caveat here is that this information is so early yet, but there's some interesting trends, especially if you compare it to 2004. Look at Indiana. Early, but some is telling. And you notice we're filling in more. We're up to 26% in the state of Indiana now. We were at 12 last time we talked. So the results are starting to come in. And some of it is pretty telling. Number one, Indianapolis, you expect Barack Obama to do well here. There is a small but significant African-American community in the city of Indianapolis, 56 to 43%. I want to go back in time four years ago just to double check that against how John Kerry did in Indianapolis, 51 to 49. So right now, Barack Obama is running ahead of where John Kerry ran in Indianapolis. That's one way a Democrat can be competitive. Now, let's come back to 2008 and look at some of these other counties. Again, this is a huge Democratic area up here. We have absolutely nothing so far in Gary and Hammond and Lake County, right up along the Chicago suburbs. That's one place. This is a conservative Democratic area down here. That's the place you want to watch. But Campbell, one of the things you look at are the margins within the conservative counties. And I'm just going to hit one randomly. And I'm going to say here in, I'm going to try that one, Kosciuszko County is 1.2 percent of the population. Look at this, 66 percent right now for McCain, 33 percent for Barack Obama. That's a big McCain lead in that county. Well, let's go back in time and just see. How did the Democrat run in that county last time? 21%. So Barack Obama right. is running ahead of where Kerry ran in these rural areas. Noble County, you come back over, 69 for Bush, 30% for Kerry. Let's come back in time here. Fast forward in 08. Wow. And again, Barack Obama is running ahead of where John Kerry ran in the rural areas. And so Barack Obama is not going to win most of these counties out in rural Indiana. But right now, looking at the early results, he's running well ahead of John Kerry, which is critical. Keep the Republican margins down out in the rural areas and then run up the numbers in Indianapolis, which at the moment he is doing. Another key area, college campuses, huge for Barack Obama, South Bend, Indiana. We know what is there, the University of Notre Dame. Right. It's a Catholic county, St. Joseph County there. Barack Obama right now running ahead of John McCain there significantly, and 82% of the vote is in here. So this is almost done here. 59% for Barack Obama in this county. One more check back in time. And you see George W. Bush carried this county four years ago by a narrow margin, yeah. but Barack Obama, That's again, still. outperforming John Kerry, and in some of these counties, even outperforming George W. Bush. Still a long way to go as we watch that. But at the moment, if you're the Obama campaign, even though at the moment McCain is leading in the state, if you're the Obama campaign right now, you are very encouraged. And a lot to keep an eye on here in Gary, as you said, which yes. is generally Democratic in Evansville. Uh, we got a projection, so let's throw it back to Wolf, and we'll come back and do Florida in a minute. Wolf? All right, uh, Campbell. Uh, here we go. CNN now, projects, CNN now projects that South Carolina and its eight electoral votes will go to Senator uh, McCain, even though uh, he's down uh, with 1% of the uh, precincts reporting. Uh, based on the information that we have, the exit polls, as well as other information coming into the CNN Election Center, John McCain, as expected, will carry South Carolina and its eight electoral votes. Uh, uh, that, as I said, was fully expected. Uh, we're getting ready, by the way, the top of the hour. Several states are going to be closing, uh, 15 states and the District of Columbia. Here's what we have right now. If we add up the red states, uh, Kentucky and South Carolina, that adds up to 16 electoral votes so far for John McCain. Vermont up in New England has three electoral votes. We've projected it will be going for Barack Obama. Those yellow states are still up in the air. We don't have enough information to make a projection in those states right Right now, there you see the states that will be closing in two minutes and uh, four seconds. We will have projections at the top of the hour in two minutes in these states. 15 states and the 
District of Columbia at 8 p.m. Eastern. We'll be closing and we'll be watching very closely uh, to see what's going on. Anderson, uh, uh, you know, as we wait another minute or so uh, before the uh, polls close in these 15 states in D.C., I think all of us are going to be looking forward to seeing what we can do and what we can say in about Pennsylvania. Yeah, as we said before many times, the McCain campaign said they have to win the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, Jeff Tubin, if you can, try to explain to our viewers, you know, we just saw South Carolina were calling for John McCain, even though on our board, with 1% of the votes in, McCain is down to Barack Obama. How is it that we can project a winner in South Carolina? Well, our exit polls cover the whole state and we know the history of the whole state and when there is such a substantial margin in the exit polls that we are confident that when all the votes come in uh, oh, the one candidate will be ahead then we feel comfortable making a call but the key point is we never make a projection in a state that is remotely close if all we have is exit polls so we wait for the vote. It's not a surprise that John McCain would win in South Carolina. Exactly. It was not uh, so a competitive not a, campaign right. in, in that. We will never make a projection in a state based on exit polls if it's if it's at all likely to be Under close. a minute until polls close. Sure, what you, you're looking for to see the actual vote in a two or three places actually seems to confirm what you're getting in your exit poll. Is there, if they're close together and it's a landslide, then you can go ahead and call it. But if it's fairly close, as Jeff said, even if you get some numbers, you want to wait and, 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 and with an abundance of caution. You know, uh, uh, the CBS had called, for example, South Carolina just a bit ago, and I think CNN waited and was patient. And there's always this question right. in every news organization how to do this. Uh, we've got polls closing in just a matter of seconds in a number of states. Let's go back to Wolf. Anderson, 15 states in the District of Columbia, they're getting ready to close their polls. 171 electoral votes at stake. CNN could project winners in several of those states. In fact, eight of those states we project will go for Barack Obama. Take a look at this. We project that uh, Senator Obama will carry the state of Massachusetts with 12 electoral votes. Uh, that's fully expected. We also project that Senator Obama will carry his home state of Illinois, 21 electoral votes, fully expected. Connecticut will go for Barack Obama, seven electoral votes. New Jersey, as expected, will go for Barack Obama and its 15 electoral votes. Uh, New Jersey, widely expected. Uh, Maine, uh, there are four electoral votes. We're projecting that three of those Four electoral votes in the state of Maine will go for Barack Obama. Maine, one of two states that could divide up their electoral uh, votes. Uh, Nebraska, the other state that divides up. The, all, all the others are winner take all. In Delaware, we project that Barack Obama will carry Joe Biden's home state. Three electoral votes in Delaware. In Maryland, ten electoral votes. Barack Obama will carry Maryland. And finally, the District of Columbia. And three electoral votes. Barack Obama takes Washington, D.C. We project that uh, John McCain will carry two states so far uh, that have just closed, Oklahoma and its seven electoral votes. Oklahoma going for John McCain. And Tennessee, 11 electoral votes going for John McCain. Uh, we project those two states. Now, there are six states that have just closed their polls. We cannot make any projection in right now. Those states are Alabama, Florida, Mississippi, Missouri, New Hampshire, and Pennsylvania. Florida, Missouri, New Hampshire to a certain degree, and Pennsylvania, those all are considered uh, battleground states. But we don't have enough information uh, yet to, uh, to make a, a projection in those six states. But based on what we have projected so far, right now Senator Obama is ahead with 77 electoral votes. The blue states are his, 34 for John McCain. The red states are his. The yellow states, the polls have closed in those states, but we have not yet been able to make a projection in those states. Uh, we're getting more information over at Voter Analysis, and I want to go to Soledad O'Brien and Bill Schneider because they're going going through the exit polls to help us better appreciate what is going on in the country right now. Soledad. All right, Wolf, let's take a closer look then at South Carolina. Very interesting there. A couple of interesting categories to look at. So first, South Carolina. Okay, let us go to South Carolina, which is red here because it has gone for John McCain. Now, uh, take a look at African-American voters in South Carolina. They were 26. They were about a quarter of the vote almost unanimously, 96% for Barack Obama. That, of course, was expected. On the other side, you have white voters who voted for John McCain. Where are the white? There they are. White voters, 
This is quite a phenomenal showing. McCain got 71% of the white vote in South Carolina, and where he especially did well were white evangelical born-again voters who were no less than 39% of the voters in South Carolina. They voted a solid 84% for John McCain, which is better than George Bush did nationally in the last election. So this picture here, these graphs, in a nutshell, why John McCain was able to walk away with South Carolina. Wolf? Soldier, thanks very much. Uh, and as we continue to watch what's going on, let me just recap what we know so far uh, of the states that we have made projections on. Senator Obama right now with 77 electoral votes to 34 for John McCain. Remember, 270 is the magic number. You need 270 electoral votes to be elected president of the United States. So right now, just after 8 p.m. on the East Coast, Senator Obama has an advantage, but it's still very, very early in this night. Uh, let's take a look once again. I'll update you on the poll numbers, uh, the election uh, results that are actually coming coming in. These are real ballots, not exit polls. In Florida right now, with 15 percent of the precincts having already reported Senator Obama maintaining his advantage, 55 percent to 44 percent. It's just changed, actually. 55 percent, 45 percent. He has a 316,150 uh, 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 advantage over Senator McCain in Florida. Uh, Virginia right now, almost 20% of the uh, precincts have reported 56% for McCain, 43% for Obama. He's ahead by 66,000 McCain in Virginia. And in North Carolina, about 2% of the precincts have now reported very early, 62% for Obama, 38% for McCain very, very early in North Carolina. That's a battleground state with its 15 electoral votes. So it's shaping up. It's still very, very early. We're watching it closely, Campbell and John. But uh, you know what? We'll, we'll do it the old-fashioned way. We'll let the votes come in. Oh, old-fashioned. Wolf, what's wrong with you? Let, well, let me ask you. We know, we know we're being conservative right. here, but we've all been talking about Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania right. closed. Why, well, show us quickly why well, we haven't called Pennsylvania yet. Because we don't have any votes. There is a wide outline of the state of Pennsylvania. <laughs> and, Campbell, we could go back in the primaries. There are a couple of examples. Missouri comes to mind as one of them. Where others, there are competitors. We love them dearly. We're not on a limb and made calls that turned out to be wrong. We're not going to do that here. We're just going to be extra conservative and Got count it. the votes. We know what the exit poll says. We, people have seen the public poll. You can guess at home if you want, or you know, but we're going to be conservative. We're going to count the votes. I'm all for that. Okay, now let's look at two states, because I know we've got additional information in some of the counties, Indiana and Virginia. I want to go into Virginia first. We'll look at Virginia here, and it's starting to fill in. And you see a lot of red here, and you see Senator McCain running ahead right now. Only 20% of the vote in. A couple key things. Number one, this is a key battleground area. I'm going to turn this up and stretch this out a little bit. This is a key battleground area down here in southeast Virginia. You have Christian conservative area in Chesapeake, also in Norfolk, a military community, naval bases. Key to Senator McCain. Also, though, in Norfolk and Hampton Roads, a significant African-American population. This is a battleground in southeast Virginia. We have no votes. That's why it's white there. I want to come back up here. We also have very few votes up here in the Washington suburbs. And this is ground zero for the state of Virginia because of the fast growth of the Washington suburbs and the more democratic leaning over the past 10 years of the Washington suburbs. So not much in there yet. So if you're the Obama campaign, you see these early numbers and you're saying, let's wait and see what happens more up in the state. I do want to show you something. We just showed this in Indiana. I want to show it again in Virginia because we're beginning to see a pattern state by state and we can go to Florida and see it as well. I'm going to randomly pick a county. I didn't know where I was going. We're going to Louisa, Louisa County in central Virginia. And you see John McCain getting 57% of the vote with 36% of the vote in. Here's what I'm doing, Campbell. I'm just going back in time and testing a trend because we're seeing this everywhere. I'm going to go back to 04, 59, 40. That one's not so bad. That is more comparative, pretty close to four years ago. Let's come fast forward again and let's pick another one in another part of the state to see if John McCain, the reason I'm doing this, to see if John McCain is running as strong as George W. Bush in some of the critical areas. You come down here along the North Carolina border, Halifax County, McCain 52, Obama 47, 91% of the vote in. So we're close to a full county here. Let's go back in time. Again, not much population there. We just right. want to see the trend then and now. Let's go back four years ago. McCain has 52 now. George W. Bush four years ago, 57. So he's underperforming. That's right. not as dramatic as we saw in Indiana. But, but you're seeing that across the board. John McCain much. cannot afford to underperform George W. Bush in rural Virginia because what we expect to happen in the Washington suburbs, what we expect to happen in the African-American community in Richmond and down here in Norfolk, John McCain has to at least equal George W. Bush he in the rural parts of the state. He needs to be overperforming in those areas to compensate and, and for the growth up in, up in Northern that's Virginia. That's what your hunch would tell you. He has to at least match up. But the way Northern Virginia is trending Democratic, if he's going to hold 
hold it. He has to hold everything Bush did. And we're seeing this increasingly. I'm going to come down to Florida. This is 2004. I'm going to come right here. I'm going to bring Orlando out. This is 2004. This is a big and growing county. Independence. This is a swing area in Florida, which is why Kerry Bush, 50-50, right? Okay, let's come forward now to 2008. This is what we see so far in Orlando, 77% in, wow. Obama 60, McCain 39. If numbers like that continue to hold, and again, 20% statewide, everybody take a deep breath, break out the pretzels. We're going to have to let the count come in here. But, but this if is the I-4 corridor, too, which is the deciding. This is the money. In Florida, this is the money. This is where, in a close race, it is decided right here. And again, 20% statewide, but watch all this blue. And I'm going to go back four years ago. Remember, so you see blue over here in St. Pete. You see Orlando and in the central Florida area. Excuse me for stepping across, but we're going to go back in time now to four years ago. Remember all that blue? Yeah. Well, wow. there's a lot of red. And if Barack Obama continues to hold those counties right in here, and if McCain continues to underperform the Bush numbers, you can see where the so night's going. Demographic changes here too, a big factor? Absolutely, absolutely. This is one of the areas, and we can show you that actually. Let's come up to the demographics here. We can show you that it's a little more difficult to see here, but this is an area where we see the more you see the colors, is the more intensity of something. You're beginning to get a larger Hispanic population right. up here in the I-4 corridor. You also have registration changes, Campbell. Used to be more Republicans, now there are more independents. De Democratic registration is up, independent registration is up, Republican registration is down. This is the swing area in Florida. I want to turn that off and come back to where we are. If a lot of this is blue at the end of the night, Barack Obama has a pretty good chance of winning Florida. George Bush turned it red four years ago. This is a critical battleground. All right. Do we have time? Let's go to Indiana real quick and get your read there, because I know we've got a few more counties in Indiana, and it's that same trend comparing it to 2004. This is, this, is, this is filling in, and you see a very competitive race right now. McCain ahead, 32 percent, so we've got about a third of the vote in. We have a long way to go. But again, if you look at it, remember what we said before. This, we know, will be a pretty Democratic area. It's not in yet. This is a college campus area right here. It's not in yet. Turn off the telestrator so I can bring this out. This is a college area. It's not in yet. You, you move over here. Obama's running pretty well in these rural counties. And key again, let's just pick one out of the, out of the blue. We're going to go. We came there before. Let's try another one over here, and let's come up here to the corner. Steuben County, only 0.5% of the population. McCain's getting 54% of the vote. Let's go back in time, compare him to George W. Bush in Steuben County. Wow. Bush getting 65% of the vote. Everywhere we look, almost everywhere anyway, McCain is underperforming Bush, which is a problem. A bad sign for McCain in Indiana. Uh, we'll keep an eye on it. Still, uh, as you mentioned before, John, uh, still uh, only 33% total, I think, for the state of Indiana reporting. So a lot more ahead. Wolf, let's go back to you. All right, uh, guys, thanks very much. Uh, I want to show our viewers what's going on. Uh, first of all, in Chicago, this is Grant Park. You're looking at these live pictures. Uh, thousands and thousands of people have shown up there. Uh, eventually, uh, they anticipate that Barack Obama will be speaking there at some point down the road. That's where they've gathered. And out in Phoenix, uh, there you see uh, the ballroom at the Biltmore Hotel. Uh, Senator McCain eventually will be speaking there. They're getting ready uh, for that. Uh, they're in Phoenix uh, in the ball room at a beautiful hotel, uh, the Biltmore Hotel. I want to go back to Grant Park in Chicago right now. Uh, Suzanne Malveau is our reporter there. She's right in the middle of that crowd. Uh, Suzanne, uh, we got a better microphone for you this time. Hopefully we'll hear what you're saying because you have a very enthusiastic crowd and they're going to be screaming uh, no matter what you say. Well, I'm going to try this again. Hopefully you'll be able to hear me, but they're watching CNN. They're listening to CNN, so they are very, very excited. We expect about 70,000 people to be here at Grand Park. I want to give you a quick overview here. You've got the crowds gathered here. You've got hundreds and hundreds of cameras of media from around the world covering and watching this particular event. If you go over behind me, you'll also see the podium. That is where Barack Obama will be speaking. It's in front of 25 flags and glass plates to protect him. Unprecedented security. And then, of course, you see the monitors in the background watching themselves, watching the excitement, uh, the anticipation will, if you can't believe. Uh, they're not waiting for the results. They are already starting the party here in Grand Park. And I'm telling you, it's not just here. They're expecting a half million to a million folks along the lakeside. It has already started here, Wolf. All right, it's very exciting. We heard every word that you said, Suzanne. I love those uh, microphones. Uh, we were using those at the conventions, and our viewers not only can see us, they can hear us as well. That's really important. Suzanne Malveaux will be getting back to you. Uh, uh, I want to I want to go to uh, Dana Bash right now. She's over at the Biltmore Hotel in Phoenix, Arizona. There you are, Dana. You got a nice microphone. Uh, tell us what's going on uh, where you are. 
Well, a very, very different kind of atmosphere here at the Biltmore. But you know what? This was uh, not planned to be anything close to what you're seeing from Suzanne and uh, from Camp Obama in Grant Park there in Chicago. Uh, it, people are starting to gather in this relatively small ballroom here. Uh, they are watching the returns as well. Every time they have seen uh, one of those solidly red states uh, so far go for McCain, there have been wild cheers here. Uh, but what's going to happen is uh, at some point, people who are here are going to move outside to uh, a great lawn, and that is where John McCain is going to address his supporters here uh, in Arizona. And I got to tell you, in terms of the mood, uh, again, talking to advisors who are here, they're monitoring uh, everything that they can in terms of numbers that are coming in. And it hasn't changed much. It is still stoic. It is still realistic. And uh, they are trying to sort of keep their chin up and realize over and over and over, they tell us, this is a very difficult year for any Republican, and they say that there will be time for postmortems in the future, but right now they say they're just going to uh, keep, keep, keep their fingers crossed that John McCain can do what he has done uh, many times before, which is pull off uh, a big surprise. But again, I think realism is probably the best word to use uh, to describe Kent McCain right now. Good well, word, and they're applauding. They're not applauding Dana Bash, the, the Phoenix Boys Choir uh, behind <laughs> her. They're applauding. They did a nice job. Exactly. We can hear them in the background during your report, Dana. We're going to be getting back to you soon. All right, Dana Bash is in Phoenix. Suzanne Malvo is in Chicago. Let's update you on what we know right now. Here are the votes as they're coming in with all these states now having closed. In Ohio, less than 1% of the precincts have reported uh, Obama ahead 68%, uh, 67% to 32%. Uh, but remember, this is very, very early in Ohio. Uh, 20 electoral votes at stake. In West Virginia, Obama 56 percent to McCain's 43 percent. But once again, less than 1 percent of the precincts have reported. So it's very early in West Virginia. In Georgia, 4 percent of the precincts have reported. McCain with 63 percent to Obama's 36 percent. Very, very early in Georgia. And it's uh, 15 electoral votes. And in New Hampshire, only 5 percent of the precincts have reported. 57% for Obama, 42% for McCain. New Hampshire has four, 11, four electoral votes. You want to see all these numbers coming in in real time? CNN.com. That's where you can go get a wealth of information. CNN.com. Co our coverage will continue from the CNN Election Center right after this. of America Votes 2008 is brought to you by Cisco, a primary provider of the network technology for CNN's political coverage, and by Divided We Fail. Demand action from the presidential candidates and our leaders at dividedwefail.org. Visit the Election Center at cnn.com slash election for in-depth information on the candidates. Welcome aboard Flight 1120. There are six exits on this plane. Two exits on each side. And two window exits over the wing. Do you fasten your seatbelt. Don't turn the flat metal tab until the buckle until it locks securely to tighten. Pull those Strap. A water evacuation. Unlikely. But just in case your seat cushion may also be used as a flotation device. It's our pleasure to have you aboard. From all of us, thank you, you for flying. flying. Business travel without the travel. That's the human network effect. Cisco Telepresence. Welcome to the human network. I was just out of college. I was living in New York City. I had everything in front of me. And then I got really sick. I started to see doctors, and I went to specialists, and it was that time they discovered I had Lyme disease. After a year of going through tests, my medical bills were about $50,000. If I had to do it all over again, I don't know what I would do differently. I had health insurance. I had good health insurance, is what I thought. What's going to happen to the gas guzzlers, the monsters of the road? All the utility in the world isn't worth much if we can't afford to drive them. So, why not have utility and efficiency? The Hyundai Santa Fe, with all the features you want in a CUV, plus 24 miles per gallon. Get 0% financing for up to 36 months and up to $3,000 bonus cash on a 2008 Hyundai Santa Fe. The world has two real large challenges right now. One of them is to make sure that we have energy to supply our economies, improve the standard of living for people all over the world. And the second challenge is to be able to do that without harming the environment. It's a massive amount of energy that's needed, and it's projected to grow more than 30% over the next 25 years. There's plenty of oil around for the future. The challenge 
is they're in more difficult places. You have to make very large investments, and underlying it all is technology. ExxonMobil has developed breakthrough technology like R3M. The Earth has electromagnetic waves. With R3M listening devices, you can make sense of those waves, which allows you to see deep below the Earth's surface before you've even drilled a well. We have to go further afield. We have to apply more and more technology. It's very exciting when you think about technology that not only accesses additional energy supplies, but also minimizes environmental impact. All right, we're back here at the CNN Election Center. By the way, Anderson, uh, Arkansas closes at 8.30, so we'll see what's going on there. But a whole bunch of other states close at 9 p.m. on the East Coast, uh, so the numbers keep on coming in. And we're still watching some of these key battleground states. Uh, Virginia, we're looking at Pennsylvania, uh, Georgia, uh, a lot of places. Uh, Florida, we're watching very closely. North Carolina as well. A lot to cover in these next couple of minutes. Yeah, I want to walk over and update our viewers on what we know right now. Let's go to Florida. Already 30% of the uh, vote of the precincts in Florida have uh, reported in Senator Obama maintaining an advantage 53 percent to 47 percent. He's up by uh, 251,332 votes. 30 percent of the precincts Florida critical number of electoral votes 27 at stake in North Carolina another battleground state right now only 5% of the precincts have reported 58% for Obama 41% for McCain uh, an advantage for Obama 172,720 but remember that's uh, early only 5% of the precincts are in 35% of the precincts have now reported in uh, Indiana and McCain maintaining a slight advantage 51% to 48% he's up by 37 1,130, 11 electoral votes in Indiana. And in Virginia, almost 30% of the precincts have now reported in Virginia. Senator McCain, McCain maintaining an advantage, 56% in Virginia to 43%, up by 107,000 votes or so, 13 electoral votes at stake in Virginia. Let's bring in David Axelrod right now. He's a senior advisor to Senator Obama. He's joining us from Chicago. Uh, David, thanks very much for coming in. Uh, what do you think? What's going on from sure. your perspective? <clears throat> well, uh, good things, Wolf. I mean, we like what we see around the country. We like the turnout. We like the early returns. We're thrilled that Indiana is competitive. Obviously, Pennsylvania was a key. Uh, the McCain people identified Pennsylvania as a, a must-win state for them to put their 270 uh, together. So, uh, and we're looking forward to the returns from the western states where we think we're going to do really well. Early vote out there was really robust. Uh, North Carolina looks uh, interesting. Uh, f and, you know, I mean, the, the inspiring thing is that all over this country today, people came out sometimes waiting in long, long lines for hours and hours to participate in this process of changing the direction of the country. And we think at the end of the day uh, that that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, tell our viewers in the United States, David, and around the world uh, what Senator Obama is doing now, where he is, Michelle Obama, and what we can expect uh, to see them, to hear from them over the next few hours. What's your game plan? Well, he's, uh, he's home right now with his family. Uh, as, as you may have reported, as you know, he... He played his traditional uh, basketball game with uh, his uh, with friends uh, uh, and staff uh, uh, late this afternoon. It's become sort of a, a tradition uh, and uh, uh, a lucky one for us. So we didn't want to disrupt that. He went home spending quiet time with his family. He's going to come downtown uh, later this evening. And uh, he'll come out and speak. We've got a great crowd in Grant Park, as you know. He's going to speak when we know something and when, uh, when it's clear. We don't need to. We've waited two years, Wolf. We can wait a couple more hours. To, uh, uh, to, to draw conclusions. I here. know he's superstitious about playing basketball on Election Day. Any other superstitious uh, elements that, that go on a, on a day like this? Yeah, well, one superstition is not claiming victory too early. That's a big superstition. Yeah, we that have. would be bad. Uh, and, and, <laughs> and, and so uh, that's something that we're not going to do. But uh, uh, no, that's the big one. You know, he carries around some people give him lucky charms uh, around on rope lines and at, at town hall meetings and so on. And he's carried those in his pocket uh, uh, through this uh, through this campaign. But look, I think ultimately uh, it's this isn't really about luck. It's about uh, uh, whether or not the American people respond to your message and uh, believe that we should move in a new direction. And I think uh, uh, tonight we're uh, beginning to see that uh, 
That's, the, that's, that's exactly what this country wants to do. All of us were deeply saddened yesterday when we learned that his grandmother, his 86-year-old grandmother, passed away. How is he dealing with this enormous loss? We know how much he loved her and what a critical role she played in raising him. Well, no doubt she was. She played a formative role in his life, and much of who he is is uh, is, is as a result of her her love and her guidance. Uh, but it was not a, a huge surprise. Uh, she had been ill. He had been told uh, that things were grave. That's why he went to uh, Hawaii, uh, uh, you know, toward the end of the campaign because the doctor said it may well be that she wouldn't make it uh, to the election. And I think uh, yesterday he was feeling very happy. Uh, that he had done that, that he had been able to uh, to see her, uh, and uh, that meant a lot to him. But of course, it's hard, and uh, uh, you know, he. Uh, I think he's been buoyed by the enormous outpouring of people who've sent their good wishes. And uh, yesterday, in that crowd, you could sense it. There was, uh, there were tens of thousands of people, and they were all there uh, supporting him uh, through uh, that uh, difficult moment. So. Uh, you know, uh, that is, that's some solace right there. Yeah, I'm sure. And our deepest condolences to him and his family. Is there anything mm -hmm. you're seeing, David, right now that is giving you a little uh, heartburn? Any problems out there as far as voter irregularities or surprises that you might not necessarily like? Well, of course, there are always, uh, there are always issues at the polls, uh, Wolf, and we want to make sure that everybody who's been in line gets a chance to vote, and we, we're making sure that that happens. But if you ask me what's giving me heartburn, it's that I can't exactly figure out what should be giving me heartburn right now, and that's a, an unusual position to be in, and uh, I'm trying to grasp, I'm trying to uh, uh, deal with that, you know. Uh, the main thing is just to, you know, uh, we would love to make the clock go faster and get the numbers counted and, and uh, 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 come to some conclusion, but everything we see at this juncture uh, seems positive to us, and not just positive about the outcome, but positive about the possibility of putting together a new coalition. He's spoken right. uh, since 2004 about breaking up this red state, blue state paradigm. I think we could possibly do that tonight. But you haven't unleashed these thousands of lawyers that you have on standby all over the country. That has not been necessary right yet. Is, is that true? Well, and it, it, there, have been, there, there have been places where we've needed to, uh, to, to intervene to make sure that there were more uh, voting machines or ballots uh, uh, available. But uh, I don't see any gross irregularities, any pattern of irregularities, just the normal stuff you'd see on, a, on an election day. And that's very positive. But we're prepared even now for anything that might arise. I Finally, I just want to show our viewers once again the live pictures. Thousands of people are gathering in Grant Park right now. They're obviously very excited uh, in Chicago along the lakefront there. Uh, but at some point later tonight, you anticipate Senator Obama and his family making the move and going over there. That's where he's going to address his supporters. Is that right? Absolutely, yes. He'll be there, uh, and we're looking forward to it. It's great to be uh, back in our uh, hometown to, uh, to, uh, to be with our our, our, our great supporters. So we're looking forward to that, and we're just asking for a little bit of patience while the votes get counted here. All right, uh, you've been patient a long time. You, got, you can be patient a little bit longer. David Axelrod, thanks very exactly. much. We'll be talking. David Axelrod is in Chicago. Uh, we're watching all of this unfold. We've got new numbers coming in, more poll closings, getting ready for that. CNN.com uh, is where you can get all the results coming in live. Stay with us, our special coverage from the CNN Election Center continues after this. We're doing it. It's happening. Get ready for the wildest of the movie's most unexpected. Her name bubbles. Outrageous comedy of the year. Just explain to your private. Look, this doesn't mean anything. Zach and you. Do you talk to your... Yeah. Rated R. Introducing an ale that's dry hopped and top fermented for a bright, hoppy finish. Budweiser American Ale. What's an American Ale? Discover for yourself. New Budweiser American Ale. Tell me something. Why does my company have so many printers? Every time I turn around, there's another one wasting electricity, waiting for a print job, not to mention the stockpile of supplies. Give me one machine with outstanding productivity and functionality with an LCD panel from Sharp that lets me preview scan documents, plus an inner finisher that doesn't waste space. While you're at it, how about a sleek design? The Frontier Series from Sharp. Work without limits. So here you are, a little confused. 
Did you think the road to retirement was an expressway? Come on! You can't start this journey without knowing where you're going. You, my friend, you need a plan. Call Ameriprise today at 1-877-AFI-1325 to receive your free copy of our guide, Navigating the Risks to a Happier Retirement. You need a plan. Turn to America's leader in financial planning. Whether it's time to replace equipment or you're just looking for ways to save, an HP multifunction printer is the way to go. It lets you copy, print, fax, and scan at a price you can afford. For the latest in HP printers, visit CDW.com. D.L. Hughley's new show really breaks the news. Do any of you plan on watching D.L. Hughley breaks the news next week? D.L. Hughley breaks the news. CNN Saturday night, 10 Eastern. From the so many choices. So many options. So many models. Introducing the most fuel efficient way to shop for a new car. Automotive on demand, only on Time Warner Digital Cable. Tune to Channel 710. This holiday season, OC16 is inviting you to be a part of the gift of giving. During these difficult economic times, you can help us bring some holiday cheer to a family in need. To nominate a family, write us a letter or log on to OC16.tv. Click on the gift of giving banner and tell us their story. Remember, we all can help make a difference in a family's life. Join OC16 in the gift of giving this holiday season. at cnn.com slash heroes. And CNN can now project that New Hampshire will go for Barack Obama. New Hampshire, uh, this is a obviously very, very painful for Senator McCain because he desperately wanted New Hampshire. That's where he really got going in his bid for the Republican presidential nomination. But based on the exit polls, based on the actual numbers coming in, uh, CNN projects that New Hampshire and its four electoral votes will go for Barack Obama. Nine percent of the precincts have reported. Right now, Senator Obama has 60 percent of the vote in New Hampshire, 39 percent for Senator McCain. Uh, that's an advantage of 14,000. 397, under 10% of the precincts reporting, as I said. This is a state that Senator McCain really wanted to win. He was very sentimental about all those town hall meetings he did there in jump-starting his campaign early on after Iowa. But New Hampshire, New Hampshire will go for Senator for Senator o Obama. Bill Schneider and Soledad O'Brien are at voter analysis right now at the CNN Election Center. Uh, Soledad, uh, what are we seeing? Why are we giving New Hampshire to Senator Obama? Let's go right to the voter analysis board. A uh, couple of interesting categories which really explain it all. So if you pull up New Hampshire here on our board. Which should be blue. Okay, and let's take a look first. Highly educated voters, that's always been a good category for Barack Obama. That's right. Voters with a postgraduate degree, the top of the educational category, this was one of the top uh, groups that delivered for Barack Obama, 70% for Barack Obama. I mean, these are, they are gone to New Hampshire. It's a very high-tech state. This is a very big breakthrough for Democrats to do that well with uh, postgraduate educated voters. Wolf was talking about the dismay that John McCain must feel, especially when he was really targeting those independents. But you see, they're blue here, which means they went for Barack Obama. That's right. The top groups are the most, whereas Obama had the biggest advantage, and his advantage shrinks a little bit until you get to the middle. Independents, blue, they voted 60% for Barack Obama, 38% for McCain. A big disappointment. They're the fastest growing group in the New Hampshire electorate. Men was a category that Barack Obama was targeting hard and had to do well in. And men in most states have voted Republican, but here in New Hampshire, uh, by a slight margin, 52 to 47, they went for John McCain, uh, sorry, for Barack Obama over John McCain. So pretty close there, but everywhere else, as you can see, uh, blue, Barack blue, Obama, blue, 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 a right? lot of blue on that map. Just a few red categories in New Hampshire. Which means Barack Obama taking New Hampshire. Bill, thank you. Wolf, you can see it right there in the, in the map.
All right, so that thanks very much. I want to take a look at some uh, numbers coming in, ballots coming in, and uh, some Senate races that we're watching very closely. Let's start in the state of Virginia. We've already uh, projected uh, that Mark Warner, the former Democratic governor of Virginia, will uh, win this contest against the former Republican uh, Governor Jim Gilmore. 59% so far for uh, Warner, 39% for uh, Gilmore, 36% of the precincts in Virginia have reported. This is a pickup because uh, Warner, this Warner, will replace John Warner, the Republican, no relation, uh, as the next senator from Virginia. In Kentucky right now, uh, with 39% of the precincts reporting, look at how close it is. The uh, Senate Minority Leader, Mitch McConnell, with 51%. Bruce Lunsford, uh, the challenger, 49%. Very, very close. We are in no position to make a projection in Kentucky. This is one uh, race that the Democrats have uh, worked very hard to, uh, to capture McConnell, Mitch McConnell, fighting for his political life right now. Now, in North Carolina, look at this, 8% of the precincts have reported Kay Hagan has been challenging Elizabeth Dole, the incumbent Republican. Kay Hagan ahead uh, by 57% to 40%, but only 8% of the precincts are in. Uh, Kay Hagan making a very, very strong challenge. Elizabeth Dole fighting for her uh, political life as well. And in New Hampshire, a similar situation. John Sununu is the incumbent Republican. Uh, Gene Shaheen, the former Democratic governor, popular, very popular. 9% of the precincts have reported. 56% for Gene Shaheen. John Sununu, 41%. She's ahead by almost 10,000 right now with almost 10% of the precincts in. Uh, this is a race that we're watching very closely as well. Uh, let's go back uh, to uh, Campbell uh, and John King. Uh, I think you're looking at North Carolina right now. Is that right, Kim? We're going to look at all uh, of these races because we are getting a little bit of uh, more information as we look uh, more closely at the counties. And we're not calling any of them, as you mentioned yet, Wolf, except for the Mark Warner win in Virginia. But let's take a look at North Carolina. North Carolina, you see it. The red is the counties filling in for Senator Dole. The blue, the counties filling in for her challenger, Kay Hagan. This is one of the key counties in the state of North Carolina, Mecklenburg County. It's almost 9% of the state population. African-American population there, but also Campbell. The, the banking community that's been a lot of trouble there because of the financial meltdown. Wachovia Bank headquartered right there. A lot of economic issues there. Senator Dole is at the moment not performing as strongly as she needs to in Mecklenburg County. You come out here to the more Democratic counties and Hagan running. These are early results. Well, these counties, 72 percent out here. If the Democrat is winning out here, then the Democrat's in pretty good shape. But we'll watch the rest of these results as we come in. I want to go north to this. This race is a blowout, but I want to show something here. This is the state of Virginia. Right. This was a Republican state not all that long ago. Look what Mark Warner is doing to former governor Jim Gilmore. Jim Gilmore is not a nobody candidate. He was a former governor of this state in the past decade, and this is a blowout. The Republican Party in the state of Virginia is going to be having a long talk with itself about what to do Which next. Which well for Obama in Virginia. Certainly does. For those numbers Certainly well. does. Now, Warner has his own personal popularity because Mark Warner left as such a popular governor, but the Republican Party of Virginia has a long many months ahead trying to figure out what happened there. This is New Hampshire, Campbell. 10% of the vote in. Gene Shaheen, the former governor there. This is another way to battle of heavyweights among Senate candidates. A former governor against an incumbent senator who is the son of a former governor and the former White House chief of staff. This looks kind of bleak. You say there's not much vote in, but most of the people live here. And actually, most of them live even further south. Conquered the capital. Most of them live here. Let's stretch this out a little bit and look. Many of you might be familiar with this area from the Democratic primary. This is Manchester, almost 9% of the population. And this is what Jean Shaheen needs to win. She's running very well in this blue collar area. This is where Hillary Clinton beat Barack Obama in the Democratic primaries. It's where the people live. You want to get them there. And one other key place is out here on the coast, Portsmouth, Democratic town out right near the coast of New Hampshire. And Jean Shaheen running well ahead there with about 40% of the vote in there. So the early numbers suggest the Democrats are in for a strong night in New Hampshire. We will watch because this part of the state, more rural. Right. Sununu will do well up in here. <laughs> the question is down here where the people live, and one of the places we haven't seen anything yet is Nashua. Nashua. That's another big city in the state of, in the state of New Hampshire. But let's take a quick look at Kentucky, because this one, as Wolf pointed out, is still way, way too close to call. But this is a crucial seat. Mitch McConnell is, trying to hold on to a seat here. He is the leader of Senate Republicans, and in a lead in a year when you know the president of the United States is largely being repudiated by the vote happening tonight. John McCain is in a very tough race. And let's assume for the sake of the argument, it's a long way to go. But if McCain loses, who is the leader of the Republican Party? Well, Mitch McConnell, the Senate leader, is one of the highest ranking Republicans in the country right now. And as you can see, he is in quite a race here. Let me erase this so you can see the numbers more clearly. This is one of these races, A, 
Obama put some money in the state. The Democrats put some money in the state because they would like to beat Mitch McConnell. It's also a place, though, where the leadership supported that financial bailout. Right. That was the thing the leadership had to do, and but some voters didn't like it. In yeah. many places, you do see a bit of a backlash for people wanting to blame somebody for what has happened to their 401ks and everything else and the uncertainty in the banking community, the uncertainty in the economy. If you're an incumbent, especially a re Republican incumbent on the ballot who supported that, you're having a tougher race. And this is an interesting map when you look at it filling in. The Democrat is doing well where he needs to. Out here, when you start getting out into these rural counties, Democrats putting up some respectable numbers. We're going to be watching this one for a while. Mitch McConnell, the Senate Republican leader. If he were to lose tonight, then we would have a Democratic wave. Right. Um, still early. Again, the right. only race we've called is Mark Warner right. in Virginia. But as you said, things looking uh, very good for Democrats right, right now in terms of the balance of power, Wolf. Guys, thanks very much. Let me update you on these uh, votes that are actually coming in from these battleground states, including in Florida. Almost 40 percent of the precincts have now reported in Florida, and Senator Obama continues to maintain his advantage, 52 percent to 48 percent. He's up by 178,000 votes in Florida. 39 percent of the precincts have reported. We'll walk down to North Carolina right now. 12 percent of the precincts have reported. Senator Obama ahead here as well, 56 percent to 44 percent. Uh, ahead by 166,598. In Pennsylvania, it's still very, very early. The numbers are coming in slowly, but they'll pick up very, very quickly. The polls closed there at 8 p.m. on the East Coast. Less than 1% uh, are in. Uh, only about 12,000 votes have been counted so far. 65% for Obama, 34% for McCain, uh, a difference of 3,900. In Texas, the polls won't all, in the, in the entire state, won't all be closed until the top of the hour, 9 p.m. Eastern. But uh, about three, 3 million votes have already been counted in Texas. 51% so far for McCain, 49% for Obama, but only 1% of the precincts in Texas have been counted. Uh, we're going to continue our coverage, but first we have a projection. And this is a big one. CNN now projects Pennsylvania and its 21 electoral votes will be going for Senator Obama. This is a projection that the Obama camp desperately wanted and the McCain camp desperately tried to secure Pennsylvania. Uh, it's a very, very important win. Even though Pennsylvania usually goes Democratic, Senator McCain made a major effort over these past several months to uh, try to win Pennsylvania. Uh, but unfortunately for Senator McCain, it wasn't to be. These are live pictures you're seeing from Grant Park in Chicago. They're watching us on the big screen there, and they can see they must be very excited. Uh, those are Barack Obama supporters with Pennsylvania. We project now going for Senator Obama. This is a state uh, that uh, they fought fiercely over these past several weeks. Senator uh, McCain a few weeks ago gave up on Michigan not that far away. It was in Pennsylvania that he made a major, major effort going from uh, the east part to the west part, uh, north and south Pennsylvania. But uh, Barack Obama will go forward and uh, win this uh, state. Uh, Candy Crowley uh, is uh, over at Grant Park in Chicago watching this. Uh, Candy, uh, they must be thrilled because this is a huge, huge projected win for Senator Obama. And what's really interesting is they know that. Uh, the fact is of the matter is we have talked a lot about Pennsylvania, as you mentioned. It has been a Democratic state for some time. But John McCain put so much of his last-minute time and so much of those precious dollars into Pennsylvania. And this is a crowd that knows that. I mean, that's how closely people have been watching this race. I have been amazed from state to state to state how many people understood the whole process, knew which states were important, understood where John McCain had to win, where Barack Obama was doing well. I mean, the specificity of the knowledge of some of these voters has been amazing. I think we've seen that, obviously, uh, in our coverage and our numbers. And I see it out here on a daily basis, how really uh, in tune these voters are. And that's, I think, what you're seeing here, because Pennsylvania uh, got the biggest applause of all as you've been going through these states calling them for either Obama or McCain. And clearly, inside Obama headquarters, although they expected this win in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania wasn't even on Obama's itinerary in the final days rolling up. He was totally in those Republican states. So uh, they were pretty confident about Pennsylvania, but this just obviously reinforces that confidence, Wolf.
All right, uh, Candy, stand by. I want to go out to, uh, to uh, I want to show our viewers, first of all, Times Square. Uh, we've got cameras there. A lot of folks have gathered in Times Square here in New York. Uh, they're watching the CNN monitors there. There you can see them. They see themselves on television, so they're obviously excited. But a huge crowd has gathered at Times Square. Uh, uh, the Obama supporters there are no doubt very excited that we have now projected Pennsylvania uh, going for Senator Barack Obama. Let's get some uh, feedback on how the McCain campaign might be reacting to all of this. Dana Bash is over at the Biltmore Hotel in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, we can't stress how important Pennsylvania was seen by both of these campaigns. Dana, uh, walk us through uh, this loss for the uh, McCain campaign, what it might mean. It means a lot. It is a big loss, and Candy just laid it out uh, from the Obama campaign's uh, point of view. But from John McCain's point of view, uh, we spent uh, every uh, both days of the last weekend there. He was there uh, several days last week. He deployed his running mate, Sarah Palin, to that state because they, particularly in the last couple of weeks, put everything into trying to turn that blue state, the state that has been uh, blue for uh, 20 years, red. Uh, they knew it was an uphill climb. They have said over the past uh, week or so that their internal numbers did see that it was closing a little bit. Public polling, I think, did reflect that as well. Uh, but look, I mean, I just got a reaction from somebody who was here when we got the news and told them, uh, they said, the reality is they're not that surprised. And now what they're doing is they're focusing on the state of Virginia. McCain aides here tell me uh, that that is really the next thing to watch, to be honest, to see how early this thing is going to be uh, called and perhaps how early we're going to see John McCain come out. Well, we're going to watch it closely. Uh, you're at the Arizona Biltmore Hotel, and at some point later tonight, Dana, we'll be hearing from Senator McCain there, just as we'll be hearing from Senator Obama at Grant Park in Chicago. Uh, a bunch of states are getting ready to close their polls at the top of the hour. We'll update you on what we know. Stay